All right. So uh, we are at question four. By the way, we are under under the bug 8E nota. And last class, we done question three, okay, which is the imbangan duga terselaras, account berdagang dan untung rugi, and lastly, the penyata kedudukan kewangan. Okay, so this class, we're going to finish off the question four as well. Okay, so for question four, we will be doing the account berdagang dan untung rugi and penyata kedudukan kewangan. Okay, so after we done this question, uh, then in next class we will start chapter nine. Okay, bab sembilan, which is the pembetulan kesilapan. So, uh, for that one we can complete it in a class if we are fast. If not, uh, we need two classes. Then we will be done for the whole syllabus of form four. Okay. So now let's look at question four. Take out your buku nota. Right? So but before you take out your buku nota, before we start doing the question, look at the malamat tambahan first. Alright? So as I say, what you have to do is you can straight away do the pelarasan here. Then only you do it on your buku nota. You book out your format, jualan, pulangan, jualan, tolak kos jualan, tepat untung kasar lepas tu in your untung rugi, you tambah hasil tolak belanja, then you get your untung bersih. Okay? So now let's do the maklumat tambahan satu. That will be very quick. So make sure you are giving 100% focus. Okay, so question, I mean the malamata mahan number one. So this is an inventory for the 31st December 2020. So this is actually your inventory RQ. Always. You have to know which one is your inventory RQ, which one is your inventory hour. Uh, so the inventory uh, you always see in this kind of a lot of number when you Okay, or even for the first January 2020, this is always the inventory hour. So you have to know this. Okay, and always an inventory hour. And then the inventory yang kat luar dalam magma tambahan is always the inventory arc here. Alright? But then you see there is item 1, 2, 3, 4. Why are there so many items? So you just choose the highest, sorry, the lowest one yang terendah. Okay, so let's say item 1, you compare. 9160 and 8290, which one is rendah? A little bit rendah. 8290. Item 2, which one is more rendah? 10,180. Item, item 3, 3040 and 4200, which one is a little bit rendah? 3040. Item 4, which one? 9290. So you compare. This two, this two, this two, this two. And then at the end, you take all this circle in your amount, you add them up together and see what do you get. Get my calculator. Okay, so it. Two nine zero one zero one eight zero three zero four zero and nine two nine zero. Okay, at this four up, so what do you get? Get thirty thousand. 800 okay so this 30,800 is your inventory arc here 
Okay, so this one we need this figure later in a account berdagangan and also your PKK. Okay, number two. Hutang sebanyak 1,200 dihapuskan sebagai hutang lapuk. So there is a hutang lapuk of 1,200. So whenever you see hutang lapuk, first thing, that's what we learn from Pelarasan, right? We have to credit out from our account belum terima. So our account belum terima 19600. We have to minus up 1600. Okay, 1000. Sorry, it's 1200. Okay, and then please take note for your account. Okay, whenever you do a pelarasan, you always have to appear on two place. Okay, debit and credit. Ma. All right, so memang ada dua account that you have to adjust, that you have to do for the pelarasan. All right, so let's say now you're doing utang lapuk, 1,200 ringgit. So one, you adjust in the account belum terima. And then another one, you have to adjust into your account hutang lapuk. So therefore, in your account hutang lapuk, there is a 1,680 here. Can you see? Hutang lapuk. So now, because you got another hutang lapuk, maksudnya, your hutang lapuk telah bertambah. So from 1680, you have to add another 1,200 of hutang lapuk baru. Is it? So you see the same figure, it will appear on two places. One in your account, belum terima, another one in your hutang lapuk. So that's how we record for hutang lapuk. And then number three, Commission berum terpoleh 380 ringgit. So, you really know that a commission berum terpoleh is a liability. Okay, so here, if uh, normally what I'll do is I'll write down here in this uh, empty part so that I remember that there is a commission berum terpoleh that I have to record later. Right, because sometimes you might be too lazy to go through all these malumat again because it takes time for you to read them again and again. So, easy way is you after you read this soalan, after you read the malumat you understand, you know what to do, then you write it out. So, for commission belum terpoleh, or if you want, you can just put KBT as long as you remember. So, belum terpoleh, 318 ringgit. So, you remember lah, later, I have to record for my commission belum terpoleh. Okay. So this is one place. Imagine, okay? Always must have debit and credit. Ma. So here, there is a commission belum terboleh. I record in one account. And then where is another account that we have to record for this 380 ringgit? Is it? So where is it? So we are talking about commission. Then you have to go to your commission. You look for the account commission yang diterima. Because this commission belum terboleh is a hasil. Therefore, you must look for your hasil. So the hasil will be commission. See the word commission diterima. This is the hasil. So meaning I have to take out 380 from here. All right. Why you take out what is commission belum terpoleh? Belum terpoleh means you menerima wang, tapi dia belum berlaku lagi. Contoh. I receive money. I mean, like, let's say I sell pen. Okay? So, one pen is 10 ringgit. But then now, I already received the money of 10 ringgit, but I belum jual pen ini kepada customer itu. Can you see it? So, now I already received the 10 ringgit. So, this is something like a belum terpeoleh. The pen is still with me, but I already received the 10 ringgit. Okay? So, that's why I have to take out this 10 ringgit because the pen haven't been so yet. So, now, I have to take out this 380 from your 1960. Okay? So, this is the same thing that we do for the prabaya as well. So, whenever you see that something like a prabaya, Okay, then we will have to take out from the amount juga. Okay, 
But then you have to see, like, it depends on the question. But then from here, this is commission balloon to pole 380. We have to take out from the commission determiner. Okay, so next is number four. The peruntukan hutang ragu diwujudkan pada kadar 5% atas bagi account belum terperoleh. So, sorry, belum terima. So, for you to calculate the PHR peruntukan hutang ragu, you have to know the formula. So, the PHR formula, do you still remember? You have to use the ABT per se. Let me write down for you. The PHR peruntukan hutang ragu is equals to the ABT. T verse mine uh times the percentage. So how much is the ABT verse? You are using the ABT twenty nine thousand six hundred minus your one thousand two hundred. Twenty nine thousand twenty nine thousand six hundred minus. 1,200 times the percentage, which is 5%. Please take note. Jangan tolak daripada hutang lapor 1680 amount ni. Because I already said this, ABT is after you tolak this 1680. So you don't have to tolak this 1680 again. What you have to tolak is the additional hutang lapok yang dijumpai dalam your manumat tambahan. Alright, so you have to minus out 1,200 from here. You see it? So, if there is no hutang lapok kat sini in your manumat tambahan, then you don't have to minus. So, you only minus when there is a new hutang lapok kat sini. So, you minus out, then you calculate lah. So, your ABT bursi 29,000 Six hundred minus thousand two hundred twenty eight thousand four hundred times five percent you get thousand four hundred twenty. Okay, thousand four hundred twenty is your PHR for this year, but then we have to look back. In your imbangan juga, is there any peruntukan hutang ragu recorded here? So you check one by one. Eh, tak ada. Right now, there is hutang lapor terpilih, but then there is no hutang lapor peruntukan hutang ragu. So now we have to record lah. Okay, so we have peruntukan hutang Ragu of 1,420 that we have to record later. And then remember what I said just now, you must always have what two account that you adjust, right? Because we are doing polarization, we are doing adjustment. Polarization in English means adjustment. So here, one account is in PHR, Puntukan Hutan Ragu. Another account that we have to record because you see, there is no peruntukan hutang ragu in last year. So if there is a peruntukan hutang ragu, this is meaning this is a new peruntukan hutang ragu. So if there is a new thing, your first time recording for PHR, you have to use the term hutang ragu. Do you remember for your PHR? If last year other PHR, and then this year you calculate your PHR is different, so we have to check for pertambahan atau pengurangan PHR. But the thing is, in this question, you cannot find your peruntukan hutang ragu. You can look at here one by one. Can you see PHR? No. So if you cannot see meaning there is tak ada pertambahan pun tak ada pengurangan. So we cannot use either of this. Then we have to use hutang ragu. Alright. Okay. So... Next, so you can see the same amount or the amount is recorded in two places. Okay, next. So after that, after your PHR, then number five, ten percent daripada kadar bayaran adalah untuk bayaran B electric kediaman pemilik. So whenever you see a kediaman 
This is a keyword for um, ambulan. And how do we record for this ambulan? Dia cakap, it's a 10% daripada kadar bayaran. So, how much is your kadar bayaran? 5,800. Can you see your kadar bayaran here? 5,800. So, now, dia cakap, 10% meaning you use a 5,800 times the 10% and see what you get. You get 580. Meaning out of this 5,800, you have to take out 580. Because the 580 is not the cutter button for your company. This 580 is actually a ambulance that we have to record. So can you see it again? The 580, I record in my cutter button, I take out and then I put it into the ambulance. So it's two places again. So ambulance, 588. By the way, do we have ambulance here? So you have to check. Uh, sometimes they really have ambulance. Okay, so for this question, sudah ada ambulance. This is an ambulance, 3000. So what you're going to do is you take out 580 from here, then you put it into your ambulance. So your ambulance telah bertambah 580. So you see, two places. Then only your imbangan duga akan imbang. Your penyata kewangan akan imbang. Because double entry, debit credit. Okay, next. Your kada susut nilai adalah seperti yang berikut. So 10% alatan pejabat atas kos, atas kos guna apa kaedah? Kaedah garis lurus. Okay, what is the formula for Kaida Garis Rus? Later I'll show you. What about atas buku nilai? Atas buku nilai you are using baki berkurangan. Alright, so susut nilai alatan pejabat. So I'll just use S N A P. So you are using Garis Lurus, meaning you are using cost times the susut nilai percentage. So, cost is how much for your alatan pejabat? This one is very straightforward. Your alatan pejabat is, you look for alatan pejabat, 3,000, sorry, 36,000 for your alatan pejabat. So, you use 36,000 times, what is the percentage? 10%. Then you get 3,600. What about your susut? So this is your susut nilai, 3,600. Okay, your susut nilai for your kenderaan. So I put SN, kun. Alright. But then this, you're using baki berkurangan punya formula. Punya uh, kaedah. Because when you see nilai buku, this is the keyword for baki berkurangan. When you see the cost, this is the keyword for your garis lurus. So you have to know the keyword. So for the nilai buku, we are using the formula cost minus your susut nilai terkumpul S and T, then times the susut nilai percentage. So how much is your cost for your kenderaan? My kenderaan is 48,000. So you bracket 48,000 minus your susut nilai terkumpul, which is for your for your kenderaan now we are combat comparing kenderaan okay kenderaan 48000 and susut nilai terkumpul kenderaan is 4800 so you have to minus 4800 that is your susut nilai terkumpul and then times what is the percentage given here 20% so 48,000 minus 4,800, you get 43,200 times percentage 20% for your kenderaan. So 43,200 times 20%, you get 8,640. So this 8,640 is a susut nilai kenderaan for this year. Okay.
So now, in case I forget, so it is best that you put it here. So there is a so suit nilai. So you yeah, are just scribble here, ma. So you don't have to write the full thing. You're wasting your time. So just shortcut so suit nilai alatan pejabat. Okay, berapa? You calculated this now. Three thousand six hundred. Okay, two thousand six hundred. And then your susut nilai for kenderaan is eight thousand six hundred forty. Eight thousand six hundred and forty. And what I say just now must appear in two places, ma. Correct or not? So here, one is susut nilai alatan pejabat three thousand six hundred. So another place that you have to record is in your susut nilai terkumpu. That's what we have been learning for your bab 8. From A, Sambai Donkey. We are learning about the double credit entry. Betul tak? So, for your susut nilai, how do you record? Debit susut nilai, credit susut nilai terkupu. So, here, 3,600 for your alatan pejabat. So, here, you have to tambah 3,600. Because this year, we add another 3,600 to your susut nilai. So, your SNT account bertambah. It will increase. So, same thing for your susut nilai terkumpul kenderaan. How much is your susut nilai? You add how much back to your SMT. So, here will be 8,640. That's it. So, make sure you put all these things down so that you remember like, uh, when you're going through the question. Alright? So, they won't forget. Okay, next. So, this is susut nilai. We done susut nilai. Next will be gaji belum bayar. So they tell us that there is a gaji belum bayar. So you look uh, of 2,800. Okay. So 2,800. So there is this gaji 13,000. This 13,000 adalah gaji yang telah bayar. Okay. You sudah bayar 13,000. But I already said, for you to record account berdagangan dan untung rugi, kita perlu record apa, amount yang sebenar. Let's say the tuition is 80 ringgit. You pay 80 ringgit. Okay? This is the tuition uh, you run yang sebena. Tapi if you pay 40 ringgit, you buy a 40 ringgit, does that mean that your tuition is 40 ringgit? No, I already told you my tuition is 80 ringgit. Maksudnya, there is a you run yang belum bayar sebanyak 40 ringgit. So let's say if I ask you to do a account untung rugi for yourself, you cannot take this figure because ini bukan amount yang sebenar. The amount yang sebenar bagi you run adalah 80 ringgit. Therefore, you have to record 80 ringgit. And then the 40 ringgit, you have to record as you run yang belum bayar. So same thing for here. So here are all the amount yang telah bayar dan telah diterima. Tapi bukan amount yang sebenar. Okay, if there is a malam atau mahana. So, for here, gaji belum bayar 2,800, meaning there's another 2,800 yang belum record. So, I have to add back 2,800. Then, it will show the amount yang sebenar lah. Okay, so here 2,800, I said, must show in another place. So, this 2,800 will show in your gaji belum bayar. Of 2,800. Then you move on. Last one. Insurance yang dibayar adalah untuk setahun mulai satu bulan 2020. So they didn't give you any amount. They just tell you that there is insurance for satu tahun. Keyword satu tahun mulai satu April 2020. Okay. So... How much is insurance yang telah dibayar? So, insurance yang telah dibayar is, so you just look back and you imbangan juga because I told you, apa yang tengok sini adalah apa yang telah dibayar dan telah diterima. So, insurance is this one, 2880. Maksudnya, this 2880, if you link back to this part, insurance yang dibayar, which is 2880, adalah untuk setahun. So, you have to use 2880 divided by 12 because you have to know setiap bulan adalah berapa. Okay? 
And then here they say Mulai 1st April 2020. So, if you draw out a timeline, Dia Mulai 1st April 2020. Tapi bila kita nak record account kita pergi sampai bila? 31st December 2020. So we can only record for how long? Apa adalah apa nya insurance atau berapa nya insurance yang sebenar? Berapa bulan? So April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. So sembilan bulan yang sebenar. Okay. So meaning, since they say that there is 12 months, meaning sembilan bulan adalah direkodkan the extra of three months yang selepas uh, 31st December lah. The remaining three months will be your insurance that you buy a little bit, which we call it as a insurance prabaya. Yeah. So now, if you want to record here, so you times nine months, then you will get your insurance yang sebenar two eight eight zero divided by twelve. You get the two hundred forty two hundred forty for setiap bulan, and then setiap bulan you times sembilan bulan, so you get. 2160. So 2160 is the insurance yang sebenar that you have to record. So here, what you will do, you can either straight away potong 2160 or you find out the figure for your insurance prabaya. How much is your insurance prabaya? So same thing, 2880 divided by 12 times. So if nine months is sebenar, the remaining three months probably times three lah. How do you get three? You use setahun tolak sembilan bulan. You get tiga bulan. So you times three. 2880 divided by 12 times three, you get 720. So meaning this 720 is a probably. So you can do like that also minus 720. So here is a 720, meaning I have to record in another place for this same amount. 720 and this 720 is actually my insurance yang prabaya. Why prabaya? Because I pay more. Okay, so next year I pay lesser lah. Right, so 720. So if you see ah, if you use 2880 minus 720, what do you get? You get the insurance and sebenar. 2880 minus 720, you will get 21. Six zero and two one six zero is actually the figure that you use here. You use this one divided by twelve times nine, you get two one six zero. So it's actually the same thing. But then the reason I say I minus seven hundred twenty instead of zero cancel because I told you that the figure you you always record in debit and credit side, all right? So here just to let you don't want to confuse you. That's why I prefer the method of minus seven hundred twenty out. From insurance so that you can see this 720 you have to record in somewhere else 720 for insurance probably yeah. okay so i think that's it so now take out your buku nota okay and then this is question four A. Two. Pernyataan Alicia. This is a con perdagangan dan untung rugi bagi tahun berakhir the first December 
right? So make sure by now you have remember all the, the, the format each line for your account berdengan yang undang rugi, right? It always bermula dengan jualan. So you go, you find out your journal from here. So now basically you can just focus on this part. Why? Because all this information already taken out from here, ma. Right. So you can just look at this part and then should we put the figure in? Okay. So then you can save a lot of time. So Jalan. Before Jalan. So, jualan is 156480. Do you have pulangan jualan? Tak ada, right? Oh, ada, ada. Can you see? Pulangan jualan 360. So, you minus. So, if there's a pulangan jualan, you perlu tolak. Tolak pulangan jualan. Three sixty. So after you total up, pull on one zero. We get the figure one five six one two zero. This is your jualan bese. Okay. After you get the jualan bese, you have to minus your cost jualan. So under your cost jalan, there is a is always start with inventory hour. So the inventory hour, where do you get inventory hour? The first thing that I mentioned just now, your inventory for the first January. Or you whenever you see inventory in your imbangan duga here, it's always an inventory hour. So here the inventory hour is. Two four 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 zero. The past two will be your bullion. So after bullion, you check is there any pulangan bullion? Yeah, there is a pulangan bullion. So you minus pulangan bullion. So here, just put your put bullion and your pulangan bullion in this column. So that after you add minus, then you, the jumla you can put into here. So that it look more neat. Okay. So Sunan. Systematic. Okay. So your Berlian is uh 75,440. And then your Pulangan Berlian is 680. Okay. Then after that, you have to check if we have a Audi, A U D I. So Audi stand for Angkuta Masuk. Yes, we do have A. You see this A. Is this Angkuta Masu? One four two zero. Do we have U U for Upa Atas Berlian? Upa Atas Berlian. No. Okay. What about D? Duty import or duty Atas Berlian? No. Tak ada. I for insurance Atas Berlian. Bukan insurance ah. Is insurance Atas Berlian. Do we have that? A we don't. Kita ada insurance, tapi bukan insurance atas bilang. So, we cannot record here. Alright? So, here we only got angkutan masuk. So, this one you add up first. Yeah, 74,060. This is your Berlin Berset. And then, here you add your RD. So here we only get got one of the RD, which is your Angkutan 
masuk. Remember is masuk bukan keluar. Is angkutan masuk 1420. Okay, so you add them up and put to here. 76,180. So this is like you label it as your cost billion. Okay, after that you add, you use your cost billion at your inventory hour. You will get your cost barang untuk dijual. Okay, one hundred thousand six hundred and twenty. Then you have to minus your inventory at here. So your inventory at here we recalculated just now is this part. Or you want to show the working, it will be better. Right? Because I said if you this amount you calculate wrongly. At least you got show all this working. So all this working, they will give you mark, mark, mark. So even though it, your final amount is wrong, as long as you're working, you get marked as well. That's why I always like to open the bracket to show working wherever there is a working. All right? So here is like 8,290. I add the 10,180. I add the 3,080. Forty and lastly, the one that I have to add is nine thousand two hundred ninety. Bam bam. And how much do I get? I get thirty thousand eight hundred. That is my inventory IQ. But then, can you see this? This is the formula here. So you always minus out your inventory IQ in your cost column. So you, therefore, I bracket it. So after you bracket it, the amount you put here. So use the hundred thousand six hundred eighty minus the three hundred. Oh, sorry, minus the thirty thousand and eight hundred. Your this line. So this sixty nine thousand eight hundred twenty is your after the minus inventory IQ minus after minus this. This figure is your cost draw And you see now from top already say that this we should minus. Therefore, this is your cost draw line you have to bracket it because you should minus. So from here, you're using your jawline per se minus your cost jawline like that. So that you get your untung kasa. See? 86,300. So this is your untung Let me draw a line here. And this one we have to do a cover dengan dan untung rugi. So here, if the sonar say but a cover dengan sahaja, then you stop here. This is the answer for a cover dengan. But then sonar ini cakap perlu untung rugi juga, like what we did in last class. So you have to straight away continue. Tambah hasil tolak belanja. Here you add your hasil. This is actually a very simple question, straightforward. Nothing much, nothing complicated. Right? So you check your other hasil tak? So you see one by one from your imbangan duga. And actually you found this one. Hutang lapuk terpulih is a hasil. Okay? And what else? Uh, discount and diterima. You always, whenever you see the word diterima, is a hasil. Okay, D buyer is a belanja. Okay, what else again? You check commission. Can you see commission diterima? So this is a hasil also. So you bam bam, the rest is not. All right. So sometimes it is good that you go back to your uh maklumat tambahan, the figure that we get from maklumat tambahan to check if there's anything else that we have to record. So for in this case, you can see that most of this is in the belanja. So we don't have to record in hasil. So there are three things that we have to record in belan uh, hasil. Is hutang lapo terpulih. Which is 500, you put here. 
the discount determiner. One one zero zero. The commission determiner. One nine six zero. So you add them up, put here. So this one plus your hasil, what do you get? Eighty nine thousand eight hundred and sixty. So at first, ah, uh, not the final answer. Why? Because I have to minus out the belanger. So what is in your belanger? So the belanger will be, so you check out, start from the gaji. So from the top again, model is not one. So you'll be from the gaji. But then for your gaji, you see that A, we have to add. So now you share for, you write down the, the working as well, 13,000. I have to add 2,800. Okay, then you calculate, right? 13,000 plus 2,800. I get 15,800. Okay, so done. Next is uh, I'm gonna also I already recorded in my perdagangan. You see this? So we don't have to record it, but angkutan keluar I have to record right in your belanja. Angkutan keluar, which is five five eight zero. Then is a uh, alatan pejabat. Alatan pejabat is a uh, asset. Angkenderaan is asset. Ambilan your PKK. Promo C is a belanja juga. Promo C, 640. Discount D buried. Remember I told you whenever you see the word B. D buried. D baya. Uh, all with this B. Berlian. Okay, tapi berlian is in your perdagangan. But other than that, the discount D buried. Apa D baya, blah, 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 D baya. All this belanja is in the belanja. All right, so here you discount Debury will be a 380. Then your Sewa D buyer is 8,000. Two nice asset. Berlin really record your line. Overdraft bank is in your PKK. It's an overdraft bank. Then Belanja arm. Nine hundred. Then Kada Bayaran. See the word Bayar, not B. This is a Belanja. Lah. So obvious. Bayar. So there is some working that we have to do. Adjustment. 8,800. I have to minus up 580. Because why this 180 is for your ambulance, so we cannot put it in here. It doesn't 800 minus 580, you get 5220. After that is your hutang lapo. So your hutang lapo, other adjustment juga, you use 1800. I have to add another new hutang lapo, which is 1200. And then we get 3000. Then your commission determiner already recorded your insurance. So I'm using 2,880 minus 720. Or you don't minus 720, you can show it times 9 over 12. You get the same figure as well. You get 2,000, how much? Uh? 2,260 or 2,160, isn't it? Zero times nine over twelve. Yeah, two one six zero. Wow. See, I think I left off something though. Okay, two one six zero is here. Oh, this is three thousand. Yeah, three thousand for your hutang lapo, and then insurance. 2160. All right, are we done? Not yet. You have to look at the Maluma Tambahan. 
always please check back. So commission belum terperoleh, belum terperoleh is a liability. So liability is where in your PKK. Okay, PHR. This is a contract to your uh, account belum terima. So this is in your uh, PKK as well. Hutang ragu is a belanja B. So I have to record here. So whenever you say hutang ragu, please make sure you record here. All right. And by the way, how do we get this hutang ragu? We are actually using uh, the 29,600 minus the new hutang lapo. Remember how we calculate this one? We use the ABT minus the hutang lapo and then times the 5%. And then I'm showing the working here so that the examiner know how I get this figure. So you get 1430. Okay, then insurance prior buyer, prior buyer is an asset. Susut nilai, yes. I have to record for my susut nilai juga. Susut nilai, alatan. So for here, you cannot, you can no longer write as N because in exam, you have to write the full term. Okay, so susut nilai, alatan pejabat. And how do we get this? We're using what? The cost, she does uh, 36,000 times the 10%. Then you get 3,600. And then for your susut nilai kenderaan, we are using the 48,000 cost because this is a kaeda baki berkurangan. I have to minus the susut nilai terkumpu of 4,800, then only I times 20%. So this is all the formula. And working. So I get 8,640. So is there anything else that I have to record? So the balloon buyer is a liability. Later, you should show it in your uh, PKK. All right? So you add up everything, put here. So some, add up everything. So this is your jumlah belanja. And belanja is a what? It's a belanja ma. So belanja you must minus it, right? So you bracket. Five thousand three hundred forty. See what you get here. This one minus your balance. Get thirty four thousand five hundred twenty. This is your untung bersi. Okay, I give you five minutes. Okay, I give five minutes to complete this whole thing. If you are done, then you move on to the PKK. Based on the information here. Okay, you don't have to go any other place already. Just from this information, we can do PKK straight away. All right? Five minutes uh, until 9.25 to complete this part. Make sure you do. Uh. One six eight zero. Oh wait, this hutan lapo I I type wrong dia. Yeah. The hutan lapo is actually one six eight zero. It's not one one thousand eight hundred. It's one six eight zero. Change one six eight zero plus thousand two hundred. So meaning this I have to change as well. Six eight zero plus thousand two hundred. So you get. 2080. This thing, uh, there's some change. I type wrongly for this figure. 
Okay, so therefore this will be changed as well. So let me try it again. Okay, so at the end, your Uno versus should be 34,640. Commission D-Terminal. Oh, sorry. I missed out this part as well. Commission D-Terminal. You see, I actually minus 380, but then this side, when you're writing on your paper, you have to write carefully so that you can see that you're actually minus 380. So here I did minus out, even though I minus, what, what is this again? The commission data remote is, or uh, commission broom to poly, the 380, and then we have to minus out, we have to take out from here. So your commission, commission data remote here, actually you should, you should use 1960 minus 380. Okay, then your fee will be changed as well. So this one should be one nine six zero minus three hundred eighty. You get one five eight zero. So this one change ah. Huh? So this take note of this one and this one. So at the end, your own number say should get 34,260. All right, two more minutes. Quick. All right, is everyone done? If done, give me a D in the chat box. If you are done. Type D. Okay, so I assume everyone is done now because I think it's sufficient time for you to complete the whole thing up to your own term. All right. Okay, so now. Let's move on to your penyata kedudukan kewangan. So for this, penyata kedudukan kewangan, nothing much. As long as you remember how the format is like. So always start off with your asset bukan semasa, asset semasa, tolak library semasa, then the jumlah. After that, yang ke bawah di situ is the equity, pemilik, and then if ada... Uh, liability bukan semasa, you tambah liability bukan semasa. Jika tak ada, then you terus jumlah bagi your equity pemilih. And then, make sure that they are imbang. Tapi walaupun they are not imbang, no worries. You just move on to another question first. 
Okay, because it doesn't matter at all. all right, because now this is an exam. Okay, exam is just to test your knowledge. Adakah you faham apa yang kamu buat? Adakah you faham format dan uh, penyata uh, all these account perdagangan dan penyata kedudukan kewangan? Right? Because you are not you are, you are not working. You are not working in a company. If you are working in a company, of course, you have to balance all the account. If this is your job as a, a person who do account. Right? But then now you are not working. Therefore, balancing, imbangkan the, the thing is not a big deal here in your exam. Okay, walaupun it, it, it would be good lah if you can balance the whole thing, meaning 99% you yeah, are correct, correct ma, right? Because all your double entry is correct. Okay? Tapi, if you tak imbangkan pun is okay because now we are using manual calculation like, like this one. Sometimes I might forget to, to minus out or you, you press the wrong figure. Okay, so memang ada um, sometimes some mistake. Okay, and then if if this one I didn't notice it at the end, memang my figure dalam my PKK tak imbang punya. Okay, then I will waste time. I will waste like five or ten minutes going to look for one by one. I mean, uh, doesn't worth it. Betul tak? So it's better that you spend that 10 minutes or even 20 minutes to go to do another question first. After you finish everything, they only come back. If you have time, then you come back. But even you don't have time, the time is up, you just submit. No worries because imbang doesn't matter at all. Okay? Even you go to degree or higher level of study, uh, balancing the figure, imbang kan the, the amount is not that important. It doesn't give a lot of mark as well. Right? What is important is all the working and the figure that you put correctly. Uh, that is the most important part because that shows that you know what you're doing. All right? Okay, so go to your PKK. B. Ternyata kedudukan kewangan pada 1st December 2020. Right? So, uh, you always put Ringgit Malaysia, Ringgit Malaysia, Ringgit Malaysia, and yeah, Ringgit Malaysia. Meaning, usually I'll have uh, about four parts. Okay, why? Because here is the asset. Right. So in your asset bukan semasa, do you still remember how it goes? Remember the fourth thing on top for your asset bukan semasa, the first thing is actually your cost. And then the second thing is your susut nilai terkumpu. And then your nilai buku. And then your Jumlah. We have put cost. Okay, so your asset becomes a master. So you go here and check what are the asset becomes a master. Right? So blah, 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 blah. Okay, I'll come to your part. Okay, put here. So here is very important to, to know the classification. You know, which one is asset becomes a master, which one is asset a master, but then it's already fixed. So as I say it again, if you do all the questions, if all the questions I give to you, I ask you to do, you did, and definitely you know Normally, which one is in which account? You will know that bank, uh, apa, account belum terima, inventory is always in the asset semester. And then equity, you always know there are four things. Moda awal tambah undung bersih tolak ambilan, you get moda akhir. See? So, 
the more you do, the more you, you remember. Okay, so alatan pejabat, then after that is your kendaraan. So for your alatan pejabat, you take a cost. So the one that you see here, the 36,000 you put here. Okay, for your alatan pejabat, let's focus on alatan pejabat first. Okay, then after alatan pejabat, look at the susutnya to kebu alatan pejabat. And then can we still use 5,400? The answer is no. Because can you see, I already add 3,600 to my new SNT this year. So, 5, 000, so you have to add 5,400, you plus 3,600, you get 9,000. So SNT, you have to minus bracket 9,000. This is 5,400, right? Okay, I see it wrongly. Yeah, 5,400. So you minus, see what you get. So 36,000 minus 9,000, you get 27,000. So this 27,000 is your nilai buku. Next, for your kendaraan, your kendaraan is 48,000. And then what, what is the susut nilai to kumpul for this kendaraan? You do the same thing. The original 4,800, you have to plus your susut nilai kendaraan for this year, which is 8,640. So after you add them up, what do you get? You get 13, so remember to bracket, 13,440. So your nilai buku, 48,000 dollar, 13,440, you get 34,000. 560. And then after that, you check if there is any other asset book and semester. So I don't think so. I think that's it. So you add up and put inside your Joomla. All right. So this is your Joomla asset book and semester. And after that, what is next? Your asset semasa. So always, bukan semasa dulu, then semasa. So asset semasa. So what is in your asset semasa? Your inventory. RQ. So how much your inventory RQ? With your calculator, you use back this 30,800. Okay, after your inventory RQ, your account balloon terima. So these are so how much the account balloon terima? Supposedly it's 29,600. Tapi I have to toll out 1,200 out because of the hutang lapo. And do we have peruntukan hutang ragu? The answer is yes. If we have a peruntukan hutang ragu, I told you what. This is actually a contra, so I have to minus it out. The peruntukan hutang ragu. So ABT. So for this ABT, I put here. I don't put here. I put in this column. You calculate first. So twenty nine thousand six hundred minus thousand two hundred. You get twenty eight thousand four hundred. And then I have to minus up my peruntukan hutang ragu, which I calculated just now. I get 1,420. So after you minus, you put here. So that you know what is the ABT syllabus, your PHR. You get 26980. Okay, so all this A, B, T done. Uh, what else? And is there any other asset? Semasa. Tunai, okay, tunai. Put here, tunai. 2000. The past two is what? Your overdraft bank. Can you see, this is not a bank. This is an overdraft bank. Overdraft bank meaning you are actually borrowing money from the bank already. Okay? The bit is just a short-term borrowing. Let's say your bank, you don't have money. Kosong. But then you are still using your bank account and pay. 
because some account normally our account we don't have this kind of function okay if your bank account kosong then you you the other do it memang kosong but normally for those like business account they will have a certain overdraft limit meaning below zero they can go up to minus 2000 meaning the bank is actually helping you to pay but after that you have to pay back to the bank lah, to top up to to pay for the uh the the overdraft the minus part All right so let's say you want to buy an iphone 14 the p your bank, bank account is zero but the iphone 14 is 6000 ringgit pro max okay so Maybe there's a, a function in your credit card or not credit card, but then in your personal bank. So you write check. The bank will actually issue six thousand ringgit to the to Apple store, and then you can get the phone. But do you remember that your bank is actually nothing? Don't have money. Meaning you're actually borrowing money from the bank. So that is called overdraft bank. Are you overtaking money out from your bank? All right, so it becomes a liability because why? Because now you have to pay back the bank six thousand ringgit. You sekarang hutang kepada the bank. That's why once it becomes a hutang, it is a liability. All right. So this one later I have to record in the liability. Then what else do we have to record in the assets master? Then you look at your maklumat tambahan. Okay. Remember the prabaya I said is the asset. So insurance. Rabaya, I have to record here, 720. If you want, you can show the working as well. How do you get this? I'm actually using 2,880 times the extra, how many months? Three months, right? Three over 12. And then you will get 720. Okay, other, than, other than that, do you have any other uh, access a master? After that, balloon buys a liability, balloon to play is a liability. I think that's all. So we add them up and put here. 60,500. Okay, then you minus your liability semester. You share away, use assets semester. Minus your liability semasa. So what is in your liability semasa will be what right, account belum paya. Overdraft bank, okay, what we said just now. So this will be in your liability semester. Overdraft bank of 4,900. Okay, and then what else? Nothing else in your imbangan juga, but let's look at our maklumat tambahan, the commission belum terpoli. Three hundred eighty, and then the gaji belum bayar. Of two thousand eight hundred. Is it? So you add up, put here. So this will be your jumlah liability semasa and this is a minus so make sure you bracket two eight four eight zero so this one minus this one you get this figure sixty thousand five hundred your assets master Minus your liability semester, you get 32,020. This is your working capital. We call it the model kerja. So your model kerja have to add to your asset bukan semester. You get 93,580. This is your jumlah. Right. Then after that, quickly, 
down here would be your equilibrium. All right. So this is your equity per mille. We'll start with your modal awang. Okay. So your modal awang is how much you look from your question here. Your modal is by the 1st January 2020, 62,900. So 62,900, start off with this one. After that, you have to add your untung bersih from your account untung rugi. So your untung bersih is 34,260. Is it? So you get 97,160. But I have to minus out your um, bill line. How do we minus out from my ambulance? Originally, we got 3,000, right? Tapi, so the past two, I have to add another 580. That is from your uh, maklumat tambahan. Remember just now, they say that 10% daripada your kandai bayaran adalah untuk electric kediaman. So, this is an ambulance. So, you have to add it in. And so, you add these two together, you get 3,580. Bracket. So let's see what you get. Is the ninety-seven thousand hundred sixty minus your ambulance? You get ninety-three thousand five hundred and eighty. That is your jumla. So this is your model up here. Come on, quickly finish this. I give you. Two minutes to finish this because this is very less on me. Right? Two minutes to Okay, 45 minus up. Okay, are you guys done? You've done, give me a D in the chat box again. You got done. This whole thing, PKK. Yes, I know. Right. Okay, very good. So next, we still have about 50 minutes. Let's try to complete question two because we haven't done question two, right? So look at this question two. This one, they ask you to do account, all these account, account self determinant, account insurance, account gaji, PHR, and susut nilai terkumpu machine. All right. So let's book our account. Question two. Two A self determinant.
Count seven D thirty one. Right. So let's start from a concept of the first. So first thing first, okay, you look at this one. This is part of the first March 2019. And then this Tahun brought her to the first March 2020. So from here you can see that this is a Baki Awal and the remaining here is up until RQ. Right so if this is a Awal Maksud near. All these things will record in our Baki BP, Baki Awal. So now, for account saver determinant, look for the... Do we have Baki Awal for our saver? Ada tak? Ada insurance perabai, ya? Gaji belum save. Kak, can you see not? The saver. Saver belum terpoleh. And saver belum terpoleh is a... Can you see not? Is a liability, mah. So if it is a liability based on our Abalim, Liability is where? In which debit or credit side? On the credit side. L is on the credit side. Therefore, your Baki BB, Baki Awal will be on the credit side. Okay, so quickly here. This is on 2020, 2019. March. 31st. Oh, maybe you can start off with um, April 1. Because after March 31st, you start from April Saturday. So this is your Baki BB. So your Baki BB is um 4320. This one 4320. And then they tell us that note number one, Malutama, sewer tahunan under 20,000. Sewer and terima yala So you have to know which one is sebena. Which one you like diterima? Okay? Sebenar, you send to account with Nurugi. Diterima you like from bank. Meaning you, you receive money. You menerima one. So let's do from saver yang diterima is 17,500. So if you terima saver in your, if you have an account bank, we will debit because money comes in. So I will debit bank. Here I write saver 17,500. So if here I debit bank in my account server determinant, I have to credit it. So here, 2020, March 31st. This, I mean, why I put this? Because this is the last date already. So after one year from April 1st, the tahun is 2020, March 31st. And here I terminal one bank. Uh, 17,500. Okay. And then this is the uh, sewer. They tell you that the sebenar punya sewer, one year punya sewer is 20,000. So this 20,000 is your, you have to send to your account untung yugi. If you forget about this part, go back to your 8A. That's what we learned from there. Bab 8A. Okay. So here, Imagine, in your account untung rugi, if you want to record this sewer, this hasil, it will be on the credit side of your account untung rugi. If I have an account untung rugi, the belanja is this side, hasil is this side. So in order we want to put a sewer determiner here, Meaning, I have to credit my account to Nugi. If I credit my account to Nugi, meaning in my account server determinant here, I have to, yes, debit it. So here, debit. Oh, sorry, here should be 20, 20 already. Lah. Because normally when you're recording all this, Abelarasan, it should be on the last date, your tahun berakhir. So your tahun berakhir is 31st March. Ma. Okay, so March. First, from from where? From your uh, go to your account rugi. So here you put account untung rugi. How much? Twenty thousand. So what we are doing here is actually want to find out berapa yang 
what is the Bucky HP and BB? Okay, so here you put double line. Okay, and then you zoom down. Which side is bigger? Credit size is bigger, ma, right? Okay, so you put here and this one here. All right, so meaning there is a Bucky HP of this one minus this one. Bucky HP. 1820. So if there is a HB, there is a BB. So after March 31st, it will be April 1 uh, for 2020. So your BB will come from here. So from here, the even though the Bucky RQ is on the credit side, meaning this is a saver balloon the portfolio as well. You get what I mean? So actually. Here, if you want to put saver determinant, balloon the body also can. Yeah, I didn't say cannot, uh, I said can. Uh. Okay, per the body. So if here you use saver balloon the body, then this part you have to use saver balloon the body also. You have to be consistent. Then other question you have to use like that also. But then for me, I say I go shortcut. So normally I just use Bucky BB HP. Okay, because like that, they also understand me. All right. So next. Okay. So this is for ELA. So this is how you do for account server determiner. So other will be the same as well. How you record for this one. So we go B. So this is a pound silver D W. Okay, next one is account insurance. So account insurance, let's check Baki Awal. How much is your insurance? Hey, get out the insurance part by yeah. Insurance part by is probably is an asset. And based on our asset, asset is on the Debit self with Abalim, A ma. So, meaning we have Baki BB of here on March, the, oh, sorry, April 1. So, your Baki BB is a uh, 530. This is an asset. That's why it's on the debit of 530. Okay, after that, look at your insurance. So this one. Oh, no. So insurance is the buyer, then you should doesn't. So when you buy uh, your bank one keluar. So you have to credit bank for insurance. Two, three, seven, six, zero. Correct or not? So if I credit my bank in my account insurance, I have to debit it. So here, 2020, March 31st. So from bank, I buy a uh, 23760. Then insurance pro buyer. Okay, now this is a bit different because they show we tell you the insurance pro buyer by the Aki Dahun Kewangan is like 290. So meaning at the year end, your Baki Aki, there is a pro buyer. So if it is a pro buyer again, so meaning the Baki Aki will be on the asset. It is an asset meaning it's on the debit side as well. So meaning the Baki BB will be here in the debit side. Because it is a prabaya also. So, April 1. Baki BB. Can you say now? Or here you want to write insurance prabaya also can. So, this is uh, 2090. So, when there is a Baki BB, there is a HB. La. So, you bring up your Baki HB. Of 290. So if here you put insurance pro buyer, this must you have must write insurance pro buyer for this one also. All right, these two must be the same. Baki BB then Baki HB BB. If here you put insurance pro buyer, this must be insurance pro buyer also. Okay, this one will be insurance pro buyer also. Okay, after that, 
That's it, ma. These two information given. So now I have to find the left out figure. So you can add up these two. And then 24,290 is a jumla. So now I can find out this empty missing figure by using a jumla minus the 290. You get 24,000. So this 24,000, the remaining one is what? Account only. I mean, this is the insurance in Serbana. Bagi tahun, RQ 2020, March 31st. There. So if you hear you credit your insurance for accounting rugi, maksud in your accounting rugi, you have to debit. That's why your insurance belanja is on the debit side. That's it. That's how it works. Okay, let's go to your C, your account gaji. So it's the same thing, same concept. Gaji. So your account gaji in the beginning of the year, look for the gaji. Gaji belum bayar is a liability. Liability is on the credit side. So here, you see, it's super simple, isn't it? So April 1. By the way, this is from 2019. Huh? Because Paki Awama is from 2019. Paki EB. Or you want to put gaji belum bayar here, also can. It's the same thing, 2850. After that, look at the manmat tambahan, the gaji. Gaji yang telah dibayar. So you bayar gaji. Bayar gaji means money keluar, credit. So you credit your bank for gaji. So if you credit your bank for gaji, meaning your account gaji, you have to debit it. Lah, right? So 2020, March 31st from bank. How much? 60,000. Okay. Can you buy Okay. Tapi, okay. So here there is a gaji belum bayar pada akhir tahun kewangan. So meaning in the year end, baki akhir ada 1680 yang belum bayar lagi. So belum bayar meaning is a liability on the credit side also. So here April 1, baki BB. Of one six eight zero. So when there's a BB, they must have a Baki HB one six eight zero. Okay, so from here, what you can see is you, you can share your Joomla already. Lah. So Joomla here sixty one thousand. 680, so you have to find out the missing figure. So it's 61,680 minus the 2,850. You get 58,830. So this one you send to your account. So here will be 2020, March 31st. Now the date. Okay, then last two, quick one. Your account peruntukan hutang ragu. So, D, same thing, you buka account first. Account peruntukan, peruntukan hutang Ragu. Okay, so you check, do you have PHR at the beginning of the year? 760, is it? So, and PHR is always on the credit side. The Baki BB must be on the credit side. So, here, 2019, when get Malaysia. So, April 1, Baki BB. Of 530. Okay, sorry, this is your PHR. 
760. So you put 760 first. Okay. Then we have to calculate the PHR for this year. Use back the formula that we used just now when we are calculating the PHR. We have to use the ABT per se times the percentage. So PHR equals to how much? So my ABT is 23. Uh, sorry, you don't use that ABT anymore. You use this year. This is the ABT for last year. Can you see? I have to use this year's ABT, account balance terima. So you see, by the 31st March, the ABT is 29,980. It's already given. 29,980. Then you check, do we have hutang lapo? So, hutang diri, hutang lapo. Meaning, I have to minus out 8,000. The same method, like this now. Okay, after you minus, then only we times the 5% PHR. Then you get your PHR. Okay, so 20. 9980 minus 8000 times 5%, you get 1099. So, this is your PHR at the year end. So, here for your PHR, you can straight away jump to here and put Baki DB. And then this one is 1099. So, when we have a Baki BB, we must have a Baki HB here. All right. Baki HB. So Baki HB, you write back to 1099. All right. This is this year's. This is last year. Okay, 760. We take from here. 1099, we calculate this year. Okay, so now we can straight away tell the difference. This is bigger than the other side, so the Joomla must be the same. So this one is using the 1099 minus the 760339. So you, you can just straight away compare from 760 last year to this year 1099. Is it the pertambahan atau perkurangan? From 760, you jump to 1099, that's the plus, that's the pertambahan, that's the increase. Therefore, there is a per tambahan per untukan hutang ragu. I lazy type everything, ah, so I just put PHR. So this is on 2020, March 31st. So same goes with this one, ah, 2020, in Malaysia. First, because this one you can put here also. Uh, sorry, this should be why I put this figure. This is a uh, one point zero nine. Okay, so next, last one, last one. Uh, the Susun Yaitu Kumbu machine. So after D, we're going to E. So account Susun Nilai Te Kumbu machine. So same thing. Check for your baki awal. So where do we look for this susun nilai terkumpu machine? Yeah, susun nilai terkumpu. This one, no? 50,000 is from last year. So, and susun nilai terkumpu is like your PHR. They are contra. And so they are always on the credit side. So here, 2019. Bring in Malaysia. So April 1, baki BB baki awal. So 50,000. Now, then you look at your maklumat tambahan. They say that the machine, all is already done, right? Siap, 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 siap. Okay, last one. Machine disusun naikkan 20% setahun atas nilai kos. Bukan nilai buku, ah. nilai kos. So, when you see the cost term, maksud we are using kaedah 
Garis Lurus. How to use Kaida Garis Lurus? You straight away use the cost, which is the 70,000 times the percentage, which is 20%. How much do you get? So you get... Fourteen thousand for your sister in line this year. Fair enough. And then what I say, whenever you go sister in this year, you have to add into your sister in line to So you credit into your sister in line to So here, twenty twenty minus twenty March thirty first. So when you add, what do you put here? You write the account sister. Nilai machine. So you, that's why you calculate what? Susun and machine, 14,000. So here, put 14,000. Then you add them up. 64,000, 64,000. And then here, for 2020, Ringgit Malaysia. So here, uh, March 31st, this will be a Baki HB. Ah. So this whole 64,000 put here. So HB, you bring down to BB. So 64,000. Wow. That's it. That's it. So now you know why after we get our Susut Nilai, we have to add to here. We had to add to last year when Susan had to combo because in the account we, we add juga and then get 64,000. And in this 64,000, we will put into this year's PKK. So here, if we are doing 2020 punya PKK, this one become jadi 64,000. And then the Nina Buku will be different. Lah. We will drop again. Lah. All right. So you see, we have done for all this question. So this is the answer. So are you guys done? If yes, give me a D in the chat box if you have done. Done. Right? So I will give you homework. Then you guys can leave. Uh, okay. So today's homework, you go to page 205. Do question 31, question 32, question 33. And after that, go to page 156. You have to do the objective questions. Okay, or that is your BAP 7. Uh. Okay, BAP 7 objective questions. All right, so this three question is a penyata kewangan with pelarasan, like what we did beginning of the class. And then these objective questions. All right, so if you have write down your homework, then you can leave. I will see you in the next class. Then we will start about Sembilan, the last chapter. All right, so see you guys. Take care and goodbye.